Good evening, and welcome to the Church of St. Mary. We welcome all visitors and members of this area of faith community to this celebration of the liturgy. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. So please stand and greet the presence of Christ found in one another and introduce yourself to those you may not know. Please join in singing number 421, number 421, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, found on the screens in front of you or in the Maroon Pew hymnal. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. He formed the creatures with his word, and then pronounced them good. Lord, Survey the ground I tread or gaze upon the sky. There's not a plant or flower below that makes thy glory known, and clouds arise and tempests flow by order from thy throne. While from thee is ever in thy care, and everywhere that I can be, thou God art present there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone gathered today on this fifth Sunday of Easter, we join with all of the mothers who are gathered here today to give praise and thanks to God for the gift that you are to your families, to our community, as we welcome those who are home visiting their moms. We thank you for joining us here today as we gather at this table, here to be nourished, to be fed, and to be graced by God's life, love, and forgiveness. So let us open our hearts to that forgiveness, calling to mind our sins, and welcoming his grace within us. Lord Jesus, you are food for all who hunger. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are forgiveness for all who sin. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are strength for all those who are weary. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God heavenly. God Almighty Father, glory 
to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those who were pleased to make new and holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. God's right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live anew, declaring the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord of love and mercy has brought wonder to our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Holy Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord.
Your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel reading that we just heard, as you might imagine, is the most popular Gospel reading chosen by families for their loved one's funeral. John 14, chapters 1 through 6. A familiar Gospel to us, any of us who have spent any time in the midst of people who are grieving, who are having to attend funerals, we hear today's gospel passage often. It makes sense that family members would be drawn, would be attracted to using this gospel story after all. It speaks of dwelling places. It speaks of the Father's house. It speaks, of course, to families about heaven itself. A beautiful gospel reading for funerals indeed. But here we are, hearing this gospel reading on the fifth Sunday of Easter. And it's not even a funeral. No. We gather today during this Easter season to hear these words. And I know for myself, it was, this gospel reading was one of my favorites as a child. And the reason why it was one of my favorites is because it had nothing to do with heaven. I was just glad to know that at some point in time in my life, I was going to have my own room. <laughs> That's what I loved about today's gospel. Now you laugh, but keep in mind, I'm again a reminder, the youngest of ten children. There were six of us boys, and we were all in the same bedroom together. In two beds. Now you know why today's gospel was so important to me as a child. I thought, well, if I have to share a room with other people in this life, at least in the next, God has prepared a room just for myself. 
But of course, I was a child. And I realized that that's not what today's gospel reading says at all, now that I'm an adult. Because notice, Jesus doesn't say in my father's house there are lots of individual rooms and that you're going to get one. No. Jesus says in my father's house there are many dwelling places and I am going to prepare a place for you. A place for you and I to dwell. Alone, separate, in our own separate rooms? I think not. Because, of course, a dwelling is not simply a room with four walls and a ceiling. No, a dwelling is a place where you and I choose to live. Let me repeat that. A dwelling place is wherever you and I choose to live. Ah, uh, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense that this gospel reading speaks so deeply and so dearly to families who have lost a loved one. Because, of course, the gospel speaks about living. It speaks about life. It speaks about those moments in which the deceased, while they were with us here on earth, chose to live and to share life with family and friends and now experiences that living in a new way in our Father's house. To live is to get a glimpse of God. The story is told of a young girl who was sitting at the kitchen table with her tablet and, of course, her crayons, and she was busy drawing, and her mother asked her, Honey, what are you drawing? And the little girl looked up at her mom and she said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the mother looked at her daughter and said, Honey, nobody knows what God looks like. The little girl looked at her and she said, They will now. <laughs> what does God look like? Well, Jesus says to you and I today, he looks like Jesus. Do you not believe that the Father is in me and I am in the Father? And if you don't believe that, well then at least believe the works that you see around you. Yes, our image of God, who God looks like, is none other than you and I. You and I who have Christ living in us. And you and I then choosing to live. To live in that spirit of Christ. So that means that any time you and I choose to live in the spirit of Christ, which is forgiveness, we have an image of God. We have a dwelling place where life is abundant. Any time you and I choose to live in the presence of the Christ within us by choosing to be instruments of charity and compassion and understanding to the least of our sisters and brothers by reaching out in their need by extending a helping hand and a loving heart and an eager ability to help lift people up why then the image of God a dwelling place is right in our midst Jesus tells us in the gospel today, I am going to prepare a place for you. And I will come back and take you to myself so that where I am, you will also be. Where I am, you will also be. My dear friends, that's not just in the next life. That's right here, right now. Jesus is with us. It's what we celebrate in this Easter season. He is alive. He dwells in our hearts. And so you and I are called to live in that presence each and every day so that this dwelling place that is ours, where we choose to live life to the fullest, where we choose, like mothers so beautifully do, each and every day to their children to both give 
and to be open to life and to love itself. Every time you and I choose to do that, then Jesus' promise in the gospel today to be with us always, to have that place prepared for you and I why it becomes a reality here on earth and in the life to come. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered to death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As God's church, let us offer in prayer and petition our needs. For the church and all who are entrusted to spread the word of God, may Christ's risen glory be our constant inspiration and joy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For places in the world where religion or religious differences causes pain or violence, for the gift of peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers who shepherd, guide, and care for their families, that they be blessed with health, courage, strength, and wisdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our area faith community, that we continue to encourage and pray for vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and lay ministry, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Glenn Shannon, Rose Schindel, and Stanley Lush, also remembering all mothers who have gone before us in faith, may the Good Shepherd grant them eternal light, happiness, and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we seek the strength to do God's work and make him known to others. May Christ give us the courage to live as we are called, and guide us when our faith is shaken, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As we celebrate Mother's Day this weekend, let us now take the opportunity to ask God's blessings upon all mothers who are gathered here with us this day. I would invite you to extend a hand of blessing over these women of faith as we now pray. God of love, listen to this prayer. God of holy people of Sarah, Ruth, and Rebecca, of Holy Mary, Mother of Jesus, bend down your ear to this request and bless the mothers of our parish community. Bless them with the strength of your spirit, for they have taught their children how to stand and how to walk. Bless them with the melody of your love, for they have taught their children how to speak, how to sing, and how to pray to you. Bless them with a place at your eternal dinner table, for they have fed and nurtured their children. Bless these mothers today and all days with good things and with health, Bless them with joy, love, and laughter and pride in their children and surround them with many good friends. This blessing and all graces we pray that you bestow upon all mothers today and give peace and eternal rest to all mothers who have died and gone before us in the faith. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, 
and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now show our gratitude to these mothers today. And invite our children to bring their offering forward at this time. And let us sing together number 702, Hail Mary, Gentlewoman, number 702. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright. Gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. You were chosen by the Father, you were chosen. For the Son, you were chosen from all women, and for woman, shining one, gentle woman, quiet light. Star so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. Blessed are you among women. Blessed in turn, all women too. Blessed they with peaceful spirits. Blessed they with gentle heart, gentle woman. Quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright. Gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is now renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and to drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death o lord until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, with all the clergy and with all your people. Remember also our sisters and our brothers who have died in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Together let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Join in singing number 507. Now we remain number 507. We hold the death of the Lord deep in our hearts. Living now we remain with Jesus the Once we were people afraid, lost in the night. Then by your cross we were saved, dead became living, life from your giving. We hold the death of the Lord. Jesus the Christ. Something which we have known, something we've touched, but we have seen with our eyes, this we have heard, life giving He 
chose to give up himself, became our bread, broken that we might live, love beyond love, pain for our pain. We hold the death of the Lord deep in our hearts. Living now we remain with Jesus the Christ.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Enjoy this beautiful weather we're having this weekend. Again, a happy Mother's Day to all those uh, women of faith, our mothers, grandmothers, godmothers who are here this evening. Uh, may you have a blessed day uh, this weekend, both today and tomorrow. Please join with me in thanking our handbell choir for leading us in our song prayer today. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I would also like to just um, acknowledge Patrick Janning has played in the bells for the last couple years. Patrick's graduating, and so we thank him for his time with us in the bells, and we wish him well as he moves on to his next career. So there's an opening available. Please join in singing with us our, our sending forth song number 176, Jesus is Risen. Jesus is risen, let us sing praise to the everlasting King. Alleluia, alleluia, praise Him in song, ye seraphim, praise Him with joyful cherubim, alleluia. Adore. 